Hey, it's me again. Uh, I decided I wanted to make a video today. It's really nice outside and I'm at home. I'm actually, I'm pretty sure I'm recovering from a cold. The past Tuesday and Wednesday, it's Thursday now. Tuesday and Wednesday, I felt awful. Today I'm feeling a little bit better, but please excuse any amount of crust radiating off of me and into the camera because I'm, I haven't washed my hair since Sunday and I've been wearing the same outfit since Monday, I'm pretty sure. So, whatever. But I'm glad just to be feeling a little bit better. But today, well, I'll, oh, also random update, uh, my roommate got a cat, so like, Toby is my cat and then she got a cat. It's like, mostly black but it has white feet and a white tip at the tail and white whiskers and um, he's really cool. We're still like working on getting them introduced to each other so, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I'm excited, I like cats so much. But anyways, today I wanted to make a video that has to do with like, well it's very much about my feelings and kind of like about CF being a burden on either me or the people around me and stuff. So I decided that's what I'm gonna talk about because <clears throat> it's something that kind of hit me recently. About two weeks ago, no, about one week ago, I uh, went to get a, I think I made a whole video on this, I, but I can't remember because I'm so tired. But about a week ago, I, I had kidney stones and I went in to get surgery and I ended up being okay, but there was a, kind of a scare and a lot of my family and friends thought that I was not recovering well after surgery and they were very frightened, <laughs> obviously, and it kind of... It just, it kind of hit me hard, not right away, because I was like, I'm fine, it's fine. Um, but it kind of hit me hard to see all their individual reactions and have to like, feel what they were feeling when they thought that I wasn't okay. And that's like, I'm probably gonna cry a lot, because, one, because I'm an emotional little bitch, and also because I'm sick and I'm tired. And I do that a lot when I'm sick and I'm tired, so beware. Um, but it just kind of hit me to see their feelings because it's, when, like, with CF, the way that I talk about just about anything that's kind of, like, rough or whatever, um, I tend to make a lot of jokes because I just like to be funny in general, and then also uh, I think it kind of shifts the perspective from being such a morbid, depressing thing into something a little bit lighter. But with that, sometimes I, I almost forget that it is a serious thing. And I've just been feeling a lot. Yesterday, I called someone that I had met on, on Instagram who also has CF, and he had a lung transplant five and a half years ago or maybe it was just five years it was in 2014 sometime and i was basically talking to him about like does he recommend it like what's it like after you get it because i feel like a lot of the times when i'm searching for stuff online everyone's like yes it's the greatest thing ever but i i know that that's not it just seems really fluffed and unauthentic and i wanted to get someone's actual take on it. Plus this particular person said that he always had trouble strictly following his regimen and like what the doctors recommend. Like he's very stubborn and I am as well. And so I thought that uh, hearing what he had to say would maybe help me get a better perspective on it because I think, you know, there's theoretically if you do everything right, this is how it will be. And then there's realistically, if you do this and this, or you don't do this and this, this is how it's gonna be. And clearly one person can't speak for every person who's ever gotten a lung transplant, but it was still nice to hear somebody's perspective because I don't think, 
I could be wrong, but I don't think I've ever spoken to someone like verbally that has CF. Not that I can remember. Um, so that in itself was really nice. Sorry, someone just called, so it ended the video. But what started to get to me was he was saying, I didn't realize how involved you would have to be, I guess, that there's like a lot more hospital visits and stuff, like during the surgery time or before, like once you're on the list, you have to go down to the, or at least for him, he had to go to the hospital a few times a week and then after he recovered, he had to go back a lot. And like, I just didn't realize that. And it just really like freaks me out because I have a very hard time asking for people to help me um, because when people do help me or agree to help me or whatever, I don't actually like believe that they want to or that they, like I believe that they think that they want to or that the idea of helping somebody feels good and satisfying, but I don't actually internally believe that they want to do what I need them to do, whatever it is. And so I've only recently gotten better at figuring out where my limits are and being able to ask other people to help me. So, for example, I had a friend that came over this past weekend and cleaned my apartment and she kind of had to like push like, Bryn, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? And then, you know, I like told her or whatever. And then I have another friend who, she'll cook me dinner. Like whenever we hang out, she's like, what do you want? Like, I'm gonna cook you something. And that sounds like, like relatively simple or relatively easy. But still like to me, like, even like those small things that don't take that long or like that much money or like whatever, like they really, it, it's a really good feeling to get that help, but it also like, it makes me feel very guilty for some reason. And I get like very overwhelmed when it comes to people helping me. And I'm like slowly facing the reality that I can't really take care of myself on my own. Like I cut my hours back at work and I need help from the state. Like I need uh, like disability checks to help me live. And that's a little bit easier because it, I don't feel like it's a specific person that's just like shelling out all this money like and it's everyone you know pays taxes and then they go to who needs them so it's a little bit more it's a little bit easier for me because I don't feel like I'm stealing from somebody but then like with my friend who cooks me dinner for example normally she cooks me chicken and rice because that's what I love and it takes time for her. She has kids. She has to sometimes go out and buy the chicken or the rice or whatever. Like it, it takes, I don't think it's that much money, but it's like still, she's, she's giving me free stuff that she doesn't have to do. And I don't know, like that's very nice. And like my friend who um, cleaned my apartment, it took a lot of time. She's a very organized and clean person to begin with, and I think she enjoys cleaning um, to some extent, so I don't think it was that, like to her, I don't think it was that big of a deal, but like, to me I felt like it was. And I feel like, God, I feel like anytime I ask people for help, that I'm taking advantage of them or advantage of their kindness. And I think a part of that is because um, for me, I have a really hard time saying no and I've gotten much better, but I know what that feeling is like, not wanting to say no and not wanting to let people down. And I don't want my friends 
or my family to only be agreeing to stuff because they don't want to hurt my feelings. And I don't always trust that that's the case. Even if like it seems like it would be, it just, it's really hard for me to trust that they genuinely want to help. And so with the possibility of getting a lung transplant and all this driving, I live in Harrisburg and the hospital's in Philly. So it's like an hour and a half to two hours away. And it's a lot of driving and it's a lot of everything and I don't know it just it, it scares me because I know I'm gonna need help but I don't know how to ask for it and even if I do ask for it and they agree I just end up feeling so guilty or like like I'm using them or that like what if they think that I'm only their friend because I'm using them for whatever, um, for like emotional support or to drive me or like whatever. And then on top of that, you know, none of my friends are like on disability or anything. <clears throat> so like if I have to go to the hospital two or three times a week, every week until I get a freaking lung transplant, like they have to take off work. And if, if they agree and want to help me, they have to take off work, which then, even if they can do that, let's say they can and they can even get paid for their time off, they still have to make up the work that they missed on the day that they weren't there. And so even if they're only helping me once, once every two weeks or once a month or something, if I can have enough people, you know, that I don't have to ask like the same person every time or whatever, it's still, like, I just, I don't know. It's like rearranging other people's lives. And it's not their fault. And so I think that that's, like, that's something, it, it only hit me yesterday when I talked to that guy who had the lung transplant, because I... I didn't realize how much back and forth it would be. I thought it was kind of like, you get evaluated, they say, oh, you're on the transplant list, or you're not, and you need to get a little bit healthier or whatever, but like, ideally, you'd be on the transplant list, and then you go back maybe once a month, or something like that, to make sure you're still el el eligible, and then that's it, until you get your transplant. But like it just, it sounds like it's a lot more than that and I still have to go to the appointment, the consultation appointment that's in about a week and a half. Oh my god. So, you know, I'll get more information there. But it just feels very overwhelming. And... Like, I know I'm going to have to ask for help, at least some help, but, like, I don't know how to feel okay with that, because it does not feel okay. I hate, I hate other people, like, prioritizing me, I guess, like, I don't, I don't want to need people to, to help me or prioritize me I don't want people to like I don't want people to feel obligated that's a really big part of like my morals is that I don't want anyone to feel obligated to do anything for me I want them to do it because they want to and like it's easy to say yeah I want to help but like I didn't even know how much back and forth this would be or what or could be till now and like I'm really worried that they don't that my friends and family don't understand or won't understand even when I explain it to them and that they'll agree to something without realizing what they're agreeing to and then feel like they can't say no Toby get off my laptop 
and then won't say no because, well, I can't, like, Bryn needs me, I can't just say no, and, like, they can say no. I don't know, I'm just, like, like, everything with CF and just everything is just so overwhelming to me. At, like, at this moment. Oh, in general, it's kind of overwhelming, but especially at this moment. Um, and I don't like feeling like that. And, to get off my laptop, Toby. Whatever, I'll just close it. You're not gonna listen. Um, so obviously I don't like being overwhelmed. When I get overwhelmed, I cry like this. And, no, stop, no, you are not eating that. Um, I don't know, and it, it just, it feels like it's so much, Toby, stop. It feels like there's just so much to process. And I don't know how to. And I did call today about um, seeing a therapist who specializes with people with chronic illnesses and possibly CF. <coughs> so I'm hoping to get that started soon. And if I do, then obviously this could be something that we could talk about and hopefully work on. But I just feel like, like I'm getting sick kind of fast. Not like super fast, but in the past few years, like, like normally I would go like this, but in the past few years, it's just kind of like downhill pretty quick. And I, my brain is not like accepting that and it's not processing everything that comes along with that. And it takes me forever to like be okay with admitting that I'm sick or whatever, that I need something. And like, I can't afford for my brain to not just get on fucking board. So I'm like frustrated with myself. And then I also really want to do better with my medication because part of the reason when I, when I went under anesthesia this past week for my kidney stones, the reason or part of the reason my lungs were so bad is because I'm not good at all with doing my medication and so Toby so it feels and literally is my fault or at least partially and that makes that I don't know that just makes me feel horrible that like I don't know I, I feel like in my brain, I keep trying to separate CF as like my thing and it's only mine and only I have to deal with it and only I'm affected by it and like all this stuff, but it's kind of coming to light that the people who love me also have to deal with it and are also affected by it. And I hate that. But it's not fair. <laughs> like they didn't ask for this. And I don't want to let people down. But it also puts so much pressure on me <laughs> to do things right, which in a sense is good because I should be doing things right. But It's just a lot to handle, and I have been doing such a shitty job at handling it. Because I, like, I don't know how to, so I just push it aside, and I know that that's not helpful. And I feel productive in the sense that I'm working on getting help to get there, get where I need to be. 
but I just feel like like really frustrated with myself and I just want everything to be better now and clearly that's not gonna happen I don't know I just felt like this was something that I don't know exactly who all watches my videos because it's a mixture of different topics um but for those of you who have CF or any kind of illness whether it's like a physical illness or like depression or something like that or or a mixture of like a bajillion illnesses or something like I don't know I like to show my raw side because hopefully it helps other people um, and sometimes it even helps me like um, I can look back at these videos and be like, wow, I've come far since then. Or um, sometimes I get comments from you telling me that I helped you or that you feel less alone or that, like, things like that. So thank you for those of you who are kind to me. And I really enjoy hearing from you because, especially with CF, I felt very alone my whole life and I, I didn't know, I didn't realize how much or how important it was to not feel alone. Um, it wasn't really bad when I wasn't sick, but now that it's pretty much a consistent thing and it's very much a part of my life, it really sucks to feel alone with it. So I appreciate anyone who's reached out and Hopefully this wasn't too much crying for you. I probably still would have cried this much even if I wasn't sick and tired, but like, I don't know, I guess that probably made it a little bit worse, but I'm all done. Yeah.